Hi, everyone. You do not want to miss this episode. We're going to compare Canada versus the United States when it comes to retirement savings. What are the products? What about infinite banking? What are the terms? What's the differences? We're going to compare everything today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Control and Compound. I'm Darren Mitchell, and joining me as always, Christina. Why, Christina, how are you doing today? Hi, Darren. I am doing great. Having an awesome day. How about you? I am doing fantastic. Uh, we get a lot of questions on this. Uh, you know, is this like a this in the States or people have watched videos? So I'm kind of kind of excited to answer a bunch of questions that, that we've had from listeners uh, through the years. Yeah, absolutely. I find a lot of our listeners and listeners in general out there, um, you know, we listen to a lot of content based out of the US. And then we have content based out of Canada. And we hear a lot of terms and we're like, well, is that like this? Is that the same thing? And, and you know, I think that's going to clear some of that, uh, some of that up for our listeners. Before we jump in, though, I do want to remind everybody, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please make sure that you subscribe and leave that five star review. And if you're listening or watching on YouTube, please make sure you like subscribe and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out oh don't forget to follow us on social media as well at control and compound on instagram and tiktok all right so let's uh let, let's kind of start slow and then we'll ramp ramp up so christina i, I want to talk um just kind of compare uh you know way back in my early years i was involved in the pension business in canada canada u.s we both have defined benefit pension plans like you know like the government type pension plans really now where the benefit is defined both those are really limited now in the private sector. So there's not a lot of differences there. But when it comes to uh, the defined contribution pension plan, in Canada, we call them defined contribution. Typically, it's the employer puts in 3%, the employee puts in 3% or 5 and 5, some level of matching. And then in the States, they, they, they call them 401ks but 401k matching program. So you'll hear that term matching. The most common matching in the States is whatever the employee puts in, like up to three or 5%, the employer matches 50% of that. That's the, the most common in Canada. It's usually equal employer employee. In the States, it's normally 50%, but 401k matching is just like a defined contribution pension plan, similar to here. Yeah, uh, group, R, group RRSP. Same yeah. as the 401k matching plan is kind of what you'd be looking at. Yeah. So, let, so let's talk about RSPs, Christina. Like we have RSPs. Tell us a little bit about RSPs. Compare that to the states. How, how How's that work? Yeah. So in Canada, we have RSPs. We've talked about them a lot on our uh, on our podcast for sure. Uh, retirement, uh, registered retirement savings plan, a government program that allows you to deposit into um, the, the investment vehicle. Uh, you're going to get a tax deduction, tax deferral when you uh, make that deposit, not a tax deduction, a tax deferral. Big difference. We are deferring the tax to a later date. Um, so we're going to make that uh, deposit in there. The growth, it, it's going to grow in side tax deferred as well, not tax free. Um, and then when you go to withdraw it, you're going to pay full tax on it. So you're fully taxable as income when you go to withdraw it. So um, they have a very similar plan. When you look at it, when you hear people referring to 401k, that is their version. That is the US version of the RRSP. And it works very, very similar. Um, same thing, all tax deferred. They're going to, uh, they're going to, when they take it out, it's going to be uh, taxed at withdrawal. They have a couple different rules on if you need to take it out earlier though. Like we have some where we can withdraw for home buyers plans and learning plans and things like that. I don't think they have much of that over there. It's a uh, pretty serious, like it has to be a very serious hardship in order for them to get these unlocked, to be able to take them out. Um, whereas here we have the ability, I think we have a bit more flexibility um, to pull them out for different things. Yeah, for sure. I, I know tax. the states when when they when they withdraw their four hundred one k early, they pay I think a ten percent penalty, and then on top of that they pay the tax. Yeah. Versus in Canada, if you've got an RSP and you cash it out early, it's just fully taxable to you in the in the year you withdraw it. But in the states, if you take it out early, you're going to get a penalty as well as the tax. Um, so although. You know, to be fair with the tax rates they have down there in most states, even with that 10% penalty, it's going to be less than what we, what we pay over here in Canada. I know we were at a, we were at a conference last week and just, uh, we were asking a lot, remember about the different tax rates over there. Um, and, and in the majority of the states, they would even be better off with a 10% penalty. I think, uh, uh pulling, pulling those funds out. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of off topic what we're going to talk about today, but, but it's interesting 
Now, again, in the, in the, we have federal and provincial taxes in Canada. The U.S. has federal and state taxes. But there, I think there's nine states that have no state taxes, right? Texas and Florida, Tennessee, a few others where there's no tax whatsoever. So their top tax bracket is federally is 37%. Okay, so our top tax bracket, 50 to 54, kind of depending on what province you're in. But here's a huge difference. In the United States, that top tax bracket doesn't kick in until like 700 and some thousand dollars versus in Canada, that top tax rate of 50, 50, 50 to 54 is kicking in around 220 in, in that ballpark. So in the United States, you know, you can make an extra half million dollars on top of our top, top tax bracket before you even hit the 37%. So much less tax payable in the United States in most states, you get into some of the some of the you know New York, California. They're going to have fairly high uh, state taxes, so it you know it'll be close to us. Uh, but we talked to a guy yesterday from uh, or last week, sorry, when we were away, and uh, we're like, oh yeah, how much do you pay for healthcare? And he's like, oh, we're eleven hundred dollars a month. And we're like, yeah, you know, we have free healthcare. And then he goes, yeah, what's your top tax bracket? And we're like, fifty four. He goes, yeah, mine's thirty seven. So depending upon what, what, what you make, you know, pay analytics for healthcare. And, and I asked him, I go, well, how many years before you can get in, in for an MRI? He goes, I called last week. I'm going Tuesday. Uh, I was like, okay, well, you know, slightly, slightly different. Uh, I'm not saying better or worse. I'm just saying different. Um, but tax rates definitely lower in the States. What about tax-free savings plan? We got that in Canada. Is there, what's that? How's that work? And what's that compared to the States? Yeah, so in uh, the States, they have a Roth IRA is what you're going to hear. So when we're compar comparable to a tax-free savings account, um, they're going to have the Roth R IRA. Um, and they have it set up, uh, set up very similar to ours. Theirs has been around a bit longer. Ours only started in 2009. Theirs was uh, 1997. Um, but contributions are not tax deductible, but they're also not tax deferred either. So any of that growth inside of the tax free savings account that we have here, not going to be taxed on it when we go to withdraw it. Uh, it over in the States though, there's a little bit of a difference where um, there's like a five year rule where some of the growth can be taxable if you take it out too early little bit different from ours, but the concept's the same, right? Um, they limit the contributions, very small limits, just like we do. We can't put a ton into our tax-free savings accounts, right? They're going to limit the contributions that we can make. Um, we can have that tax-free uh, growth in there. We can pull it out. So when you're hearing uh, content out there on a Roth IRA, you can compare that to a tax-free savings account in Canada. Very cool. And then uh, if we get into... We get into the Canada Pension Plan. So Canada Pension Plan, employer, employee funded in Canada, uh, introduced in 1965. So your employer puts money in roughly 5%. You put in roughly 5%. Uh, goes in a fund. That fund grows. And then at some point down the road, typically age 65, the normal retirement age, you take, you take an income from that. The average is probably, for most people that work, you know, you're looking at an average of ballpark a thousand, you know, 12, 1400, I think it's the max, depending if you worked every single year, if you don't contribute, if you don't have a job, well, you don't contribute to CPP. So, or if you only work a few years, you're going to have a very, very small CPP. But what I like is it is actually a fund. The money goes in and gets invested, grows. We have the Canada pension plan, you know, fund managers that, that look after all, all that stuff. So, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be there in exactly the format it is today when if you're 20 and when you turn 65, but I'm fairly confident, you know, there's going to be, there's a fund there to draw from, right? So United States, they have social security. Similar in some respects where the employer puts in 6.2, the employee puts in 6.2. Um, but the difference is that is taxpayer funded. So that is huge difference. So what that means is right now, there's no social security fund. There's no billions of dollars of investments out there that people fund that and then draw it out in retirement. It's literally today's taxpayers in the United States are paying into social security, which immediately goes out the back door to the people that are currently collecting social security. So when you hear all these dire predictions about social security is gonna be you know, toast in 10 years or five years or 20 years, whatever you hear in the States, 
well, that's just math, right? They're doing the math of, well, in, in, in 10 years, we're going to have this many people drawing this much, and the projections are we're going to have this many people contributing, and the math doesn't work. So, so real big difference in social, social security. However, on the upside, their social security is a lot bigger than our Canada pension plan or can be. So the max, the maximum, um, the maximum social security, if you're retired, the minimum, you got to be 62. The normal retirement age is 66 or 67. They've been increasing that. So depending upon how old you are, you could have either 66 or 67, but the maximum is $2,700 a month and change. But if you defer it till 70, it's up to 4873. So almost $5,000 a month is, is the max social security. If you defer it till 70 and you've, you've, you know, made top, top dollars and you and your employer contributed. So when, when you, when people, Americans talk to us about our government plans, you know, they, the, the perception is we have these incredibly rich government social programs. The reality is their social security is, is a lot higher than ours. And then some of it, depending upon your income, can be taxable or tax-free. There's thresholds you cross over. But if you basically, if you have a lo lower income, you, you can get that social security um, tax-free. But that's, those are the, some key differences. What else am I missing on the, on the, on the Canada pension plan versus the social security? Oh, I think that covers it. Now, one thing I did notice when I was looking into or when we were, you know, looking at the OAS benefit is uh, and, and what that would be comparable to in the U.S. Uh, I don't think they have one that's exactly comparable to it. They don't have an age 65 where this one kicks in, which is where I think maybe that Social Security, like the top up kind of comes from is the fact yeah. that they don't have that OAS that um, we have that's blanketed for everybody. Now it is income tested and we can absolutely lose it through a clawback. So it's not really for everybody. If you make too much money, you're not going to get it. Um, but they don't have a comparable OAS program. They do have a comparable um, GIS, so a guaranteed income supplement for lower income um, Canadians. We have one of those. They have what's called a supplement security income that will kick in for lower income um, individuals, uh, people who are aged, blind, disabled. So like they have that extra for um, someone that might be disabled or has that low income, but they don't have something that's exactly comparable to what we would call the old, the um, the OAS benefit. Yeah, and and the, our old age security would be similar to the social security in in the funding perspective. So there's no fund for old age security; it's paid from government government general account, same as same as their social security. So I guess their social security is really you know a combination of our CPP OAS is what we have. They have social security. Um, again, similar, but uh, but not not the same, which gets us to our big, the one we get the most questions on. You know, can I do infinite banking in Canada or can I do this in Canada when it when it comes to cash value life insurance policy? So let's let's dig into that, Christina. Uh, what 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 would be the key differences between Canada and the United States with respect to infinite banking concept? Yeah. So, so starting off with just that the infinite banking concept is a strategy. So when you learn the strategy, it can be utilized in both Canada and the U.S. So we can absolutely um, use it in both countries. Things There's there's minor things that are going to um, change that we're going to discuss today. So what might be different? So in Canada um, versus the U.S., we're going to have different products. We don't have the same insurance companies. Um, so we're going to have different products that are available to us. We're going to use the participating whole life policy um, um, here in Canada, pays that dividend every year, guaranteed to always go up, never go backwards, all of those great things um, that we, we need when we use the infinite banking concept. Um, in the US, they also have whole life insurance. And if you are doing the true infinite banking concept, as they will say, you are going to use that whole life insurance um, in both countries. We do have other insurances in both as well, though, that you hear about. So we, you know, people say, can I use universal life? Well, they have something called an IUL, um, universal life product that 
really, when you're looking at content out there, you'll see it promoted a lot on the infinite banking side. But I'll tell you, we were at a conference last week and, you know, the true infinite bankers out there will never use an IUL. It is similar to our YRT, Universal Life, Yearly Renewable Term, Universal Life. We actually have a full podcast on that. So if you're interested in, in those key differences, which a lot of people are, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty common question. Um, we both have that. We both have those types of pol policies that are not going to be useful for infinite banking. And then we both have that um, whole life policy that we are going to want to use for the infinite banking concept. Yeah, just a point on that too. Uh, you mentioned uh, participating whole life. In the States, they talk about mutual companies. We kind of have a hybrid in Canada where we have one mutual company, which means the entire company is owned by the policyholders. And then we have three companies that have participating whole life where the fund itself is owned by the policyholders. Uh, in the United States, they just basically have a lot more mutual companies to choose from. So you'll hear them talk about mutual companies, always put it with mutual company. Nelson talked about that in his book. Well, in the, in, the, in Canada, we've kind of got two, two scenarios you can use, one mutual company or three participating whole life companies. So we, we, we have those options. Um, okay, what, uh, what about some of these terms we use, uh, Christina? So one of the one of the terms, and uh, you know, I'll share this quickly. So I remember one of the first big insurance conferences I went down to in the States, and uh, I was wearing my Mountain Equipment Co-op uh, quarter zip, and it says MEC on it. Well, everyone at the conference wanted to know where to buy that shirt and how did I get that made and all this stuff, because MEC is a term they use in the States, modified endowment contract which is the equivalent of our mtar line okay so our mtar line and the mech line are very similar easiest way to explain it this is how much you can put in how much deposit or cash you can put in for a certain level of death benefit based upon your age and health right so if you're 40 years old and you want to buy and you have a two hundred thousand dollar death benefit this MEC line in the States or MTAR line in Canada is going to say, okay, you can overfund that policy, put additional deposits into your whole life up to this line. We call it the, 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 the maximum tax efficiency line or, or the maximum premium line, where in other words, you get every single dollar you can in for that death benefit. So really the goal is to drive the death benefit down as small as possible, drive the cash up as high as possible. But the MEC line in the U.S. and the MTAR line in Canada are going to be pretty similar. Slight differences in the early couple years. In the States, you can do more big lump sums up front in year one uh, where we can't in Canada. Um, but long term, our contribution rates will be similar. I think sometimes I find our, our Canadian policies even a little better uh, on, on contribution room long term, but very similar. Yeah, long term, very comparable, but you will see and you'll hear about um, like being able to do like one lump, like larger lump sums on US policies, which we're not able to do here. We just can't, we can't, uh, we can't set those up. Another key difference is um, one of the reasons why, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why the concept, infinite banking concept works so well in both countries is tax free growth or tax deferred growth. So in other words, you know, we always talk about the growth is tax free, the loans are tax free, the death benefit is tax free, very, very, very similar to Canada and the US in that respect. But if we go back to our earlier tax conversation, if you're saving 54 or 53% tax and you're in Ontario um, and you're only saving 34 or 35 or 37% tax in the United States, well, that kind of makes our product look better because we're saving more tax. And we know tax is your number one wealth destroyer. So anything you can do to save more of your number one wealth destroyer. Um, so I think overall, the, this works, I think, completely way better in Canada than the United States, just because of that one issue right there, the high levels of taxation we face in Canada. But again, same idea, growth tax-free, loans are tax-free, death benefits tax-free. Well, one extra we have in Canada as well uh, is, is with our corporate policies. So in the U.S., they don't have a capital dividend account. 
where you get that tax free, where you can flow the death benefit out tax free. So for corporate policies in the US, they're not as tax efficient as what we have here in Canada. So with our corporate policies in Canada, when the death benefit gets paid out to the corporation, it gets paid tax free. And those shareholders can then flow um, usually the majority through that capital dividend account tax free. So we are pulling money out of a corporation <laughs> tax free, which is huge. Um, we can't do that in any other circumstance, really. Um, so we have that where is they 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 don't have that CDA um, credit, so I think I think it's probably more popular that you'd see individual policies versus personal um, over in the U.S. Whereas we see a lot of corporate policies um, in Canada because it's an amazing tax strategy for business owners. Yeah, just yeah, I mean basically another another reason why they're better in Canada on those corporate policies. You're going to pay your 11, 12 percent small business tax, be left with 88 cents on those first five hundred thousand dollars you earn in your corp that money can flow directly into an insurance policy death benefit flows out tax free i mean you think of the difference of if you get a three or four million dollar death benefit long term and all that money flows out of your corporation tax free to their to your family versus that can't happen in the states it will be taxable coming out that's why they're doing more personal policies in the states whereas in canada we have a mix personal policies work great corporate policies work great but just one note on that loan too in fairness fairness to our, Amer our american friends uh, a loan on any insurance policy, a policy loan is always going to be tax free in the States. Now, all of our loans that we ever do with clients are tax free, but in the later years, um, we, we, we go to a third party for loans. Americans go to third parties more than us, but we go to third parties. So some of those loans in retirement, we don't have any taxable, taxable occurrences, but in the States, they can do policy loans and not have any tax occurrences. But What's interesting is when we were when we were down at an insurance conference in Denver, um, there were actually uh, com one company, but there's several that we've talked to. The American companies that loan money on life insurance policies, third party, not not policy loans, but third party lenders, they all want to come to Canada because infinite banking's growing in popularity. We're at the size now where they think it makes sense, and it was really interesting talking to them, saying, "Yeah." Where we want to come to Canada. This is what we want to do. So, you know, not saying that they're going to, it's going to happen tomorrow, but for most of us with insurance policies that are looking to borrow, you know, down the road in retirement and these third party loans, uh, it's going to be, there's going to be even more options, right? I mean, we got the big banks, we got the online banks, but more options uh, is, is better just from a competitive standpoint and a lower interest rate environment. Yeah, more options and uh, more fit, more efficient options. They're kind of they're bigger on the technology side over there and making things quicker um, with that loan, um, with getting those policy loans in people's pockets. So I'm excited. I'm hopeful that uh, we get to see them come to Canada sooner than later because I think it's just going to make it, things a lot easier. Not to say that we can't do that. Like we set up our lines of credit with third party lenders, we can make it very accessible as well. Um, but it's neat to see how it is is growing and evolving because with the with infinite banking. In in the US, I feel like there's, uh, there's a lot more following over there for it. Uh, there's definitely a lot more people that are practicing infinite banking, there's a lot more advisors that are talking about it. you look at the content out there, the majority is going to be on um, US based infinite banking. Um, so they've definitely evolved quicker than us in Canada. So it's neat to see what they've got on the go, because you know, it's going to be here, um, only a matter of time, we're going to end up getting it over here too. Yeah, I mean, again, you look at most things, it's one country did it, then the other country copied, right? I mean, whether you're talking 401ks, RSPs, Roth IRAs, TFSAs, whole life, UL, all those things, they're, 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 they're the same. So anything the U.S. has, you're right, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get eventually. Uh, but it's been interesting the last couple of years because, you know, they are 10 times bigger than us. So obviously there's a lot of content that's going to, you know, they have 10 times more people, so more content. And, you know, some of the key players in the business starting out, certainly, you know, with with, uh, with Nelson Nash at the, at the first and foremost, you know, was an American. And then some of the, you know, the key people that we met last week, like the Garrett Gundersons, the Kim Butlers, the Todd Langfords, you know, they're, they're American as well. Um, but I think with social media and with really the surge of, of information, because this is a concept, once you catch it, you can't uncatch it. Uh, now that more and more Canadians uh, are, are having access to the information, having access to the education. Um, it's, you know, skyrocketing in Canada. So that's just going to speed up the additional, I think, features like lending and stuff we're going to, we're going to be able to offer here. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I think we're at that tipping point now where this is, this is becoming more mainstream. And uh, as that happens, then we're going to see more and more options for policyholders down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is like, we kind of covered it, but another big difference or a, you know, a difference between the U S and us when it comes to infinite banking is just uh, awareness and adopt like a more people are, are on board for it over there, right? More people. But as we see here with, with our listeners, um, with our clients, uh, just, you know, a lot more people, the more you learn about it, you you catch it and you're, you're going to continue to learn about it. And I do think that more and more individuals are kind of opening up their minds and getting off of that um, one way traditional savings retirement track and kind of taking the time to learn new things, which is exactly why we put together these podcasts so people can learn more um, and, uh, you know, do their research, learn what they need to know. Um, and then, you know, hopefully down the road, implement infinite banking. All right. Well, that's kind of a general overview. So I guess the wrap up would be very similar investment products, saving products, uh, Canada versus the U.S. Some slight differences. Same with the infinite banking concept. Generally more similarities with a couple minor minor differences. I, I would argue all day long that it is a better concept in Canada than, you, than the United States because, because of our tax taxation in this country, because of our capital dividend account, because of our ability to do those corporate policies. So I think it works better in Canada, but certainly feel free to watch that American information online. And then if you have particular questions about, can we do that in Canada, reach out to us. Uh, happy to help any listener, anytime. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this episode of Control and Compound. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you never miss a new episode. And if you're ready to learn more, head to our website, controlandcompound.com. The link's below.